Today on Community Cooking, we have guest chef Abby Grimion making a healthy twist on a classic spaghetti bolognese. We'll show you how to cut the carbs without cutting the taste. We're cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community, so grab a seat and get comfortable. We have another great meal for you. This is your Community Cooking. Hi, and welcome to Community Cooking. I'm your host, Maria Prekacis, and I am excited to have guest chef and my friend, Abby Grimion, in the studio. <laughs> welcome. Thanks, thanks for having me. Well, and you're part of the City Cable family. I sure am, I host Common Sense. I love it. You also love to cook. That I do. Which, today I love your recipe because I love my carbohydrates, but I try to pick and choose. So I don't like two big carbs in a meal. So today we're tackling my fear. Yes. So I love, I love spaghetti squash. The thing about spaghetti squash that everybody gets wrong is that they're like, how do I open this? And like they go outside and like throw it over their head down on the concrete, halt smash. No, it's not, you can do that, but you know, it's a little fun to do that. But there's an easier way to do it and you know, not make a mess. Perfect. So. Well, spaghetti bolognese, it's really simple. Tell me about the ingredients first. So, you know, in that kind of keeping with the low carb, we use the meat of the spaghetti squash as our spaghetti base. Um, we make a homemade marinara, and we also brown up a protein, and we put that all together. And then you have this really savory meal that is low on carbs but really big on taste. And then some other veggies as well, which is great. Yes, absolutely. Carrots, um, red bell peppers. So when we make the sauce, we have we use about five pounds of the um, of tomatoes that you can get from our Torrance Farmers Market. Um, that I usually when I do, I have to go ahead and boil them and then peel the skin off of them. If you don't have time to do that, it's always great to just grab it where it's already peeled in the can. So um, and I love to use Roma tomatoes because mm -hmm. I feel like those are always the best for sauces. They always just taste so good and it doesn't have that mealy texture like some of the larger tomatoes do. So I use, um, I use the tomato base. Um, I like bell pepper. I, some people really like a sweet sauce. I like my sauces a little bit more savory. So if you like the sweet, you can do the, um, the carrots like we have here. But then I also like to do a bell pepper instead. And then of course, onions. Onions are one of the big bases of a lot of sauces that we do all the time. So. And then your lovely herbs. Yes, I always try to use fresh herbs because I think, you know, it's like, sure, if you're, if you're on a budget or if you just don't have it in the kitchen, using the dried herbs is great. But if you have it fresh, and especially like if it's in the garden, yeah, just grab, grab some and use it. So. I love it, I love it. Um, so let's tackle my fear of the spaghetti squash and cutting into it. All right, let's do it. So. We're not going to throw it on the ground today. We, we will not Darn, do Darn, that would have been fun. That would have been fun, but we are not going to do a Hulk smash. So the easiest way to, to um, cut one of these spaghetti squashes, I take my fork and I start at the end and I just start pushing little holes okay. into it. And I basically make um, a perimeter around the entire squash. Oh. And uh, because what it does is it releases the pressure, which is what makes it so hard to cut into if you just took a knife to it. So when you open that up, it makes it a lot easier to cut. Oh so my gosh. So you're not you're not putting holes in it like a potato. No. It will explode supposedly in the microwave. Uh, but you know what? I've done that a million times and it never does. I know. Well, so. I haven't tried it, but um, <laughs> so that is Oh, I never thought of that. So, you know, you go ahead and you make you make the the circumference around it and I always I always like to have things even, so I went ahead and, and tilted it over this way to make sure that my, my line was straight, and I just keep making the line around the spaghetti squash. And then once I've done that, I also take my fork and I make a couple of holes on both sides, because when you roast it, you want to have the steam to be able to have a way to escape. Okay. So, um, so I'll go ahead and finish with the holes. That's like the biggest tip ever right there. It really is. It's super easy to do. It's super clean. You know, you just grab your regular fork. You know, you don't have yeah. to have any fancy tools. <laughs> and, you That's know. That's good because my kitchen is not so equipped. <laughs> <laughs> I don't.
don't believe that for I a second. I know. I've been, I've been cooking more, which is good, and using a ton of these recipes, and of course, getting all the beautiful fresh ingredients from the farmer's market, so it's very fun. Yeah, I love, I love our farmer's market. It's they great. have such a great variety of everything. You can get plants, you can get food, you can get the organic grass-fed beef, you just you can get everything. A little bit of everything. Love it. So, we've made holes all around the spaghetti squash. So then I take my knife, and I just go ahead and make a cut into it. Wee! All right. You're like so, me, comes equipped with sound effects. Yes, so we're gonna crack this open. Look at that. And look at that. Beautiful. Then I just I just use my hands and scoop out, scoop the, out seeds. All the seeds. And the reason why they call it spaghetti squash is if Wait. you look here, the meat looks like spaghetti. Look at that, yeah. I love it. It has the best taste. It's not really overpowering. No, and I love like I said I love it when other people make it for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you are today. Yes. <laughs> but now I, I think the big thing is making a little pattern almost if you will right with the fork and making it easier and I really love if it doesn't go one way go the other way and it was much simpler yeah absolutely well and the trick is is like if you if you care to roast the seeds and you know have a nice tasty treat later you can but if not you can just go ahead and discard it um, and then what you would do with this now do you do it in the oven the microwave or you can do either now most people use the oven but you know especially in the summer here it gets hot so what I like to do is I like to cook it in the microwave, and you can roast it in the microwave, and it's super fast, and it just cooks up the same way. Well, and we put one in the microwave with, and I'm going to grab it, with a little bit of water in it. That's right. So you take your glass dish, you fill it up halfway, you put your squash face down into the dish, and cook it for 15 Whoa. minutes on high. So then let's take a look at this. Wow. Oh, Super that's tender. Beautiful. So then all you have to do is just let grab, it cool. Let it cool. <laughs> like we, we did. And then just, you know, grab your fork and just scoop it out. Look at that. Oh, it's like spaghetti. It is. It's so much better for you. It's it's healthy spaghetti. It is stealthy healthy. I've made these for my friends' kids who don't like to eat healthy food and they love it. So look at that. Oh, that's fantastic. So, and you get a lot out of it. You really do. And here's the thing. When you cook it in the microwave like that, you actually get more out of it, out of the, the meat out oh, of it, really? than you would in the oven. Because it's still kind of hard when you pull it out of the oven. So you get to kind of stretch it a little bit farther when you cook it in oh, the microwave. Like and it's faster. And 15 minutes. 15 minutes. So easy. easy. So a little bit of water, probably about a half inch. Straight down, microwave 15 minutes. That's right. And again, let it cool a little. Let it cool, and then you can scoop out the meat. Here, I'll get the very last bit while you uh, uh, heat up our pan for Perfect. meat next. Oh, I'm dying to just scoop it up and eat it. It's yes. It's so good. Squash is, yes. the vitamins in it are awesome. Squash is amazing. Okay. So we have a spaghetti, squash that is, hence the name, because it looks just like spaghetti. It sure does. Okay. So, and then we have some so, lean ground meat. Ground and beef. take a, you know, your lean ground meat. I always like to use the 93.7 ground meat, the organic grass-fed kind. Put it in my pan and um, just break it up a little bit. And then salt to pepper, salt and pepper to taste. So. What should we have? So. A little just throw in salt, a little pepper. Actually, this is this is for this salt is for our sauce that we're gonna make in just a minute. So I'm gonna grab some of this. That's kind of a fun salt flake. It I've really never seen is those. a Mediterranean salt flake. Um, you can get this at any kind of specialty store. So and it's pretty. It's very pretty. So I'm gonna just toss so if it's a the 97.3. Do you put any oil in the pan, or you just let the little bit of fat? I just let the little bit of fat okay. um, cook itself. So, just season that, throw some pepper in there. Uh, and I have to say, I'm addicted to fresh ground pepper now. I think it's the only way you can go. I love fresh ground pepper. It's so good. So, we let our pan heat up, and then we're just going to go ahead and brown our meat. And you could even, well, we could be doing the spaghetti squash while we're browning. Exactly. To save on time, because I like simple, and this is simple. Super simple. And colorful and healthy. Who exactly. Knows? Who knew? <laughs> so, we're going to let that heat up 
and then we can start working on the sauce if you want. Well, and I have to say, I meant to say earlier, the spaghetti sauce homemade from yes. marinara, I didn't realize how much sugar, I mean, you can buy it or buy, there are a lot of good spaghetti sauces out there, but making it from scratch, which I've actually done lately, it's so much healthier because you don't have the added sugar. Exactly. I, I'm kind of a freak about what goes into my food. I like to control what goes into my body, so I make a lot of my own food. And I love that this sauce recipe is so easy. It makes a ton of sauce. Yeah. You can keep it fresh. It stays fresh in the fridge for about two weeks, or you can can it, or you can freeze it. Um, oh, freezing it's great. That's yeah, easy. It's amazing, especially like, you know, when it's a cool day, make a bunch of this sauce. Put it in the freezer, keep it for whenever the days get hotter, and then you don't have to heat up the house when you're cooking dinner. Yeah. It's easy. Which is... That's one of my problems with no air conditioning. <laughs> get some honey. I like to cook, but it gets a little warm. I get it. I get it. And again, you use Roma tomatoes. You boiled them, peeled them. Yes. So they're, they are boiled and the skins are peeled. And so then we go ahead and we take those tomatoes and the onions, the bell pepper, um, and uh, a little bit of salt and some olive oil. And we go ahead and throw that in the pan along with our fresh, um, our fresh herbs and we stew it down for about two and a half hours. Okay. All right, well, we're gonna let the hamburger, the lean ground beef brown, we're gonna take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're gonna do the sauce and your twist on yummy, healthy garlic bread. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Community Cooking. Alexa, how do you tell if asparagus is still good? If it's not moldy or slimy, it's okay to eat. Enable the new skill from Save the Food on your Amazon Alexa and help fight food waste. Hi, and welcome back to Community Cooking. If you're just joining us, we are taking a spin on spaghetti bolognese without the carbohydrates, Miss Abby. So happy you're here. Yeah, it's good to be here. So, hamburger, yes, done. Yes, our hamburger is brown. Yeah, I'm like, that's done. I'm going off my checklist. Now let's go to the sauce with your fresh tomato That's sauce. That's right. So we're going to start with a generous pouring of some olive oil. Oh, we love that. And to start out with our base, then after that we're going to add our tomato. So you do olive oil, tomato, and then we cook the onions in that. Yes. As you said earlier, it will take a couple hours. It will. To cook it so all. I'm going to carefully pour this in and not splash. <laughs> That's okay. We don't Perfect. Have to clean that. Oh, ha, ha. Okay. So then I'm gonna throw in. What I like about this sauce recipe is literally you just you just throw everything in. It's so easy. You just throw it in and you pretty much forget about it. A lot of Stir chopped it. onions. Tons of chopped onions. My favorite, the bell pepper. Or you could use carrots. Or but carrots. I I'm you, going with what you like. So I, that's yeah, good. I like I like a little bit more savory than sweet. Okay. If you're one of the ones who likes a sweet sauce, the other thing you can add to this is some honey. Oh. Yeah. So that way we're staying away from sugar. We're keeping everything all natural. And I'm and giggling because look at that mound of garlic. God. Yes. I love we it. We have to have the garlic. <laughs> it's not a red sauce without garlic. And you can chop it up yourself. That's right. Or so, use the store bought. So we're and I'm gonna add just a little bit more of that olive oil. And we're gonna stew this down. So this okay. sauce takes two and a half hours to cook. You put your heat on high and you just let it, you literally just set it to go, stir it every once in a while. Really? And and that's it, and that's it. So by the time this is all stewed down, it's gonna be nice and lumpy, but everything smells really good. It's super aromatic. A couple of basil leaves. Yes. Bay leaves. The, ba I mean, the bay sorry. leaves are the important part, and the the other important part to remember is that when you're done with this sauce, you have to get the bay leaves out. You don't want to. You put them in, but you got to take them out. That's and, right. And then the herbs we have here. So I'm gonna grab just a handful of herbs. And you don't have to chop them up or anything. I I usually like to because a I feel bit. like when you chop it up, you release all those oils which is what really makes it taste great. So I'm going to take some of that. Oh my gosh, I can smell those. I, They're just, awesome. I love the smell of fresh herbs. It's, there's really this nothing better. This is my favorite in salad. Oh yes. In so recipes, I'm just gonna raw. Chop everything up mm. really kind of coarse. Yeah, you're right, it does. 
See, smell it. Yeah. It smells so good. Mm. And so easy. I love that you throw it in the pot and you just let it go. That's right. So maybe one more time. Gosh, it's just, I, oh, I wish so everybody good. at home could smell just how good I would say smell of vision One day it will be here. You just wait. I can't wait. Can't <laughs> wait for smell of vision So we throw everything into the pot and we let it cook down for two and a half hours. I'm going to turn and this And the off. beauty of television is you brought one. Now, first off, let me back up. You cook this for two and a half hours. When do you add the hamburger or we, the ground beef? We do the ground beef towards the end when okay. we're about to plate it. So let this cool down. Okay. And then we go ahead and, and make everything for our sauce. Now I've already made the sauce and I put it on my handy Vitamix. As you can see, everything's really lumpy yeah. in here, but it's because it's stewed down for about two and a half hours. So then I just go ahead and blend it. Look at how nice that now, consistency is. Well, and it was lumpy because you used your own tomatoes and the aromas and all of that. That looks like what you get in a restaurant. This is better than what you get in a restaurant oh, yeah. because you controlled everything that went in it. It's no it's sugar. All organic. I love it. No sugar, all the good stuff, none of the bad stuff. So you blend it down and then you add the hamburger at the very end so when we plate it. We, when we plate okay. it, we're going to go ahead and um, get our get our our spaghetti squash. Then we're going to you know spoon out some of the sauce, throw the hamburger in it, and then we're done. Oh, I love it. All right. Well, we're not quite done because I always like to pick and choose my carbs. Instead of having two, I said earlier at dinner, I would rather have this and some beautiful bread. And we have all the ingredients here for your healthy garlic bread. Tell me about the ingredients we need. Now, for my healthy garlic bread, I actually made this loaf of bread. And we're going to feature the recipe for this loaf of bread. I love it. On one of our upcoming episodes. So I have my homemade bread here. Okay. And, um, this is the finished product. Okay, how do you get that? Because I could just scoop it out. <laughs> it really, it really is something you could scoop out. So this is going to be our garlic mash. So what I do is I take my heads of garlic. I'm gonna here, have, uh, yeah, have I'm you just hold gonna on cover the for bread a minute. for a moment. And uh, I go ahead and just cut off the top. Okay. And then I peel back all the skin. I want the the head of the garlic exposed because I'm going to put it in a pan and roast it. Um, but I'm also going to season it at the same time. What I love about when I roast these pods of garlic is that sometimes the actual pod will pop up oh. out of it and then like you can just like pick it up and just eat it. It's so good. <laughs> Growing it's up. Good for you. Oh, it's so you good. You have to for make you. sure everyone at the party though eats it. Yes, yes. Like there's there's no shame in having garlic breath when you eat this because it's just It's so good and good for you. It's unapologetic garlic garlic bread. So, we're going to take the garlic pods as I like to call them. Yes. Um, and then do you do olive oil? What do you put on yeah, top? Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a pan and take my garlic pods and throw it in here. So like cut that one more time to make sure that gets There we go. Oh, I love it. Yeah, so we're going to cut this, peel that away. So then we're going to put it in our pan, grab some more extra virgin olive oil. I always like to douse it really nicely. Okay. And then I take some pink Himalayan sea salt, dust it on top. And then I like to use, you know, if you don't have the, the you know, fresh, Yep. You can just use your savory spice that, you know, you would normally have. Well, we're going to put this in the oven. Um, should I start cutting? Yeah, let's go ahead and, I know and you have cut a that bread. Fancy dancy bread knife for me. Yes, I sure do. She knows my cutting skills. <laughs> it has to be a good bread <laughs> there you knife. Go. So, can you like slice it in half and do it that way or do you like making slices? You can slice it whatever way you want. How about just slice it individually? Sh perfect. So, do we toast this first and then add as I call it the garlic marmalade, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever you prefer. If you want to okay. toast it, then it's fantastic toasted. If you want to have it plain, it's okay too. So. I like toasting. So we're going to cut it like this and then put it on a um, cookie sheet, cake pan? Yes. To toast it. 
Yeah, I have to set that away from me because it would just. So here you go. Are these too thick? Too thin? No, it's Whatever perfect. Whatever you prefer. I like no, if, if we're going to have carbs, let's have, yeah, let's let's have, have carbs. So. And we just put them in? Yeah, just, just put it in plain and toast it up nice and brown. And then you take your garlic mash. So when we grab that garlic out of the, um, the oven. Which I'm going to grab that because you already brought some done. Yes. So continue on. So when we grab that, that garlic out of the oven, you're going to see how nice and pretty it is because it's roasted and it just looks and smells super yummy. Look at that. Wow, that is perfect. Oh, I'll swap you. Perfect. Now, Yum. I'm going to, um, so you can take this, you know, first let it cool off a little bit. So that, <laughs> That way you're not grabbing it with, with when it's super hot and burning your fingers. But if you look, I mean, it's, it's perfectly roasted. This'll, this will melt in your mouth. So good. And what I love about this is that the, the hull just pops away. All right. Super easy. So she says, Woo! That is yummy. Mm -hmm. But wait, we're going to do something with it. Right. So <laughs> let's grab a bowl. We both had it, so it's okay. <laughs> Let me tell you. So we're gonna peel away all of our all of our garlic pods from the shell. Grab a bowl. Oh my word. Hello. Throw the garlic in there, and then we're just gonna mash it up with a fork. It's so super easy. Because I like that kind of chunky consistency. Oh yeah. So you mash it up, do you because we already add added the herbs and such before it went in the oven. So do you add anything out? This is just nope. the garlic that's all mashed just, up? That's just the garlic all mashed up. So no butter, no, no butter. I love it. All the good stuff, none of the bad stuff. That is garlic. So. But with the other uh, flavors in it, it's great. Just yeah, the herbs. You really, you really don't need anything else. So and it's I'm, healthy. I mean, if we're going to eat carbs, I guess we have to cut out the butter. That's right. Again, pick your battles. Pick your battles. So we're going to grab a fork and mash that up just to show everybody at home what that looks like. I mean, because it looks like there's something else in it because of the brown and the black from it, roasting it. It really does, but you know, can I use that spoon? You can. And just, it's so easy. Just, just mash it up. Just oh smush gosh. it. It's going to be so good. Let me see. Super simple. And again, how long do you roast the garlic about for? Um, you know, it, it depends, like 30 to 45 minutes. Okay. I, um, I usually just go on smell. I'm, I'm such a Cajun cook. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I tend it. to just, just go by like the way it's smelling and the way that it's cooking. And then I'm like, oh, it's just right. Or, oh, I need to pull that out now because it's been in a little bit too long. So you get the idea. Yeah. Um, and this is how it turns out. And you could put it straight on bread that's just Straight not toasted bread. or toasted bread or toasted it a little bit in the oven and just spread it on yeah that's it that oh is all it, that's all it is i mean so. so many helpful tips and again spaghetti squash healthy no carbs garlic we're going to put all of this together when we get back and of course go to my favorite part the tasting don't go anywhere we'll be right back you're watching community cooking back to community cooking. All right, Abby, my favorite part. Let's dish this up. Let's do it. I mean, it looks so beautiful. It's almost too beautiful to eat, but we'll make the exception today. Yes, we will. All right, so let's dig in. Oh, so again, spaghetti squash, 
barely seasoned ground beef that smells delicious. And then the sauce on top. Oh. I'm gonna grab some of this. Funny thing, you're dishing me out a small plate when I could probably eat the whole thing. But and I know. then we took the roasted garlic spread and put it on our toasted bread. Just a little bit more. Oh there my go. gosh. Now I, I'm I am Cajun, therefore I believe in feeding you. Me. So <laughs> perfect. You'd work out in our Greek family. Excellent. Okay, all so right. here's your plate. All right, get yours and all set. And then I'm set. gonna grab some for me. I'm going to grab my piece of bread. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And it's good for you too. I know. That's, look at me, I'm dying. I'm going to wait is, though, because that's the proper way to do it. This is honestly like one of my favorite dishes to make. Well, and carbs are not bad, but I don't, like I said, du like doubling up. So, piece for you. All right. All right, I'm going into the spaghetti bolognese first. I got to get a piece of everything. Okay, the teeny bit of seasoning you put in the ground beef comes out. Spaghetti squash, who needs spaghetti? And all the flavors of the sauce, you can tell they were cooking for a couple hours. Oh yeah, all it's right. so good. Okay. All right, I'm going for, for the garlic bread. Oh, mm. dip a little in my sauce. Okay, one word, yum, all caps. Yeah, <laughs> I can't. I can't wait for us to eat the rest of this. I know. I know. <laughs> we are out of time, though. But I really hope you make this at home. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing this fabulous and healthy recipe. Well, thank you for having me. So much fun. On behalf of the entire crew, Abby and myself, thank you for watching. And remember, we really do have some of the best chefs right here in our own community. We'll see you next time on Community Cooking. If you'd like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations. That's 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200, in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number displayed on the screen. And don't forget, you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. That's located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, email us at communitycooking at torrentca.gov and check us out online at youtube.com slash torrentcitycable and like us on Facebook at Community Cooking TV.